Four presents Tanks for Nothing. This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. And uh, hey, we're here. I apologize for last week possibly saying that Orangutan is Australian. He sounded Australian to me. Uh, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> you fool. Oh, no. Accents. Uh, I've, I've been watching the uh, all the comedians talk about Gilbert Gottfried. Of course. Since he died when we were recording the other day. I know. And they keep uh, that clip uh, of him on fam- uh, Hollywood Squares keeps <laughs> coming around where he like fools people. And when they're like, I agree, like, you fool. <laughs> like, it's, it's real good. It's very compelling. Oh, what a treasure that man was. Yeah. I saw him live once. Oh, yeah. How was it? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, so it was in like my mid twenties mm-hmm. and it was good, but it was kind of before I had a fully developed comedy appreciating brain. Right. The only thing I remember is him being like a real weird little goblin. Like he, <laughs> he comes out like all hunched over and little, uh-huh. you know, with like that permanent rictus yeah. you know, Joker Godfrey face. <laughs> uh, and I remember him doing, a, an off color joke about people starving in Somalia. All right, yeah, and and then the guy who opened was almost exactly the like. Uh, what if ET and Mister T had a baby? I think it might be a little something like that. He was almost exactly that, but with a guitar. Oh uh, no! Was, oh yeah, it was it was a force multiplier for oh, shit. I thought the, I thought I thought it was bad enough getting getting shot with an arrow, but then you willed out a howitzer. I don't really care yeah. so much about the <laughs> yeah, about the uh, you know uh, the what if phone home. Uh, cause you hit me with the guitar. Oof. Yeah. It was a musical version of that. Yeah. So it, it made me very worried for the show, but I remember, <laughs> you know, Gilbert was fine. Yeah. 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 No, I, the, the only like big comedian, like big name comedian I've seen is, uh, Bill Cosby. Oh yeah. Recently when... or. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. This was I back, visited him. Uh, this is this was back when I was a little, little kid. I, I, I must have been like uh, you know six or seven, something like that. It was on a it was on a trip to Myrtle Beach, uh, and uh, this uh, definitely was a trip where we went to see uh, we went to see Bill Cosby, and then probably the next night went to the Dixie Stampede, uh, which Ooh. is a celebration of the Confederate South. <laughs> wow you're really having a <laughs> having a time a yeah <laughs> yeah yeah let's time to cancel seven-year-old coal yep i oh, to, wow. to, to be fair uh i'm pretty sure the door had child locks on it so i couldn't have yeah. bailed <laughs> you yeah couldn't escape this is problematic and then like you can't get <laughs> <Yeah>. out <laughs> oh man right. well anyway uh, this episode which has nothing to do with any of that uh written by jackson public Originally aired February 28th, 2016. Mm-hmm. Follows the continuing adventures of the monarch as he uh, uh, finally takes up the mantle of the Blue Morpho um, uh, in the wake of kind of his disastrous attempt to clear the ranks above him. So he's continuing to try and clear the uh, clear the food, clear the uh, food chain above him. Right. Yeah. And accidentally succeeding. Yes. You know, <laughs> Um we also get uh, the other half of this is Dr. Mrs. The Monarch kind of doing her job, cleaning up after her orangutan's unsanctioned death mm-hmm. and dealing with his widow, uh, Battle Axe, uh, played by Orange is the New Black's Barbara Rosenblatt. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, recognize the name. She played the uh, the cancer patient in Orange is the New Black. Yeah. 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 Uh, old old lady uh, Russian or old uh, like some Eastern European mm-hmm. lady. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because we're in Villain of the Week season, not only do we get Battle Axe, but we also get another uh, level 10 arch for Dr. Venture, Think Tank, <laughs> uh, played by the great Jeffrey Wright. Mm-hmm. Um, Think Tank is awesome. I like Think Tank uh, so much. The book unlocked, uh, really unlocked him for me because I thought, like, he's funny and I don't know why. He's lonely. He's too smart. To, yeah. Like, he doesn't have any peers. <laughs> it's uh, This episode and the next one both are really good at... Uh, dot characterization indirectly yes through through who they put him up against mm-hmm. 
like all these people, you know, the, the person who thinks doc is, is one thing and getting disappointed. And then another person who knows exactly what doc is. And then just absolutely like <laughs> twist him around his finger <laughs> with it. Uh, we're the good, uh, doc episodes. Yeah. Um, uh, Think so, Tank is great. He's obviously like he's a he's a Modoc. Okay, like it's like a, a brain yellow, but mm-hmm. mixed with Modoc. Okay. Um, in terms of a uh, of hero, every once in a while you get not brain yellow, uh, Brainiac. Okay. You know they talk about it in the book like they haven't done a thinking supervillain and they forgot about they, poor brain yellow. Oh, they have, uh, but he's senile. He's out the game, you know. <laughs> yeah, crabs himself. Uh, whereas uh, Think Tank would never. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Brain Yellow was a ruse. He was he was scheming the whole time. Yeah. Well, he's a. Uh, uh, but back in the day, he was a real gotcha real guy. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. was scheming at the the museum episode. Yes. But he's a real like it's it's ambiguous whether he's actually from the future or what mm-hmm. have you. Is Modok actually smart or does he just have a big head? Uh, Modok is kind of smart. Okay. Uh, but he's really egotistical and and short sighted. Uh, that Modoc. I see. So he he's smart. Uh, you know what Modoc stands for, right? Uh, machine only designed f- for killing, or something like that. Mental organism designed only for killing. Oh yeah, uh, that's uh that's dumb. That's real dumb. It, th- there's also a Modam who is a lady Modoc. <sighs> designed um, only for what? Murder. Uh, I can't remember what the Modam <laughs> stands for. I haven't read any Modam comics, but I I will. Uh, the Modoc series that came out on Hulu the stop motion animation one is surprisingly pretty funny. Hmm. Uh, that is a uh, surprisingly good show. I saw comparisons so. to venture brothers off of that one. Cause it kind of looks into how secretly pathetic Modoc is. Is that the case? Yeah. 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 It's a deconstruction superhero thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Funny. Hmm. Uh, the, uh, so the story behind where they put this together is kind of interesting. Um, they'd taken a little hiatus as they were, you know, working on the season and they had a hard time putting the season together. Um, they decided in the end to kind of do a couple interior episodes because they realized they had not laid enough track for the finale that they wanted to do with the, the blue Morpho arc right. and that finale, which ended up becoming the intro of season seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they wanted to fill this out and Jackson had sat down. They had done rapacity and blue. And as he was reviewing the animatic, he just kind of started asking himself some questions about how the uh, events of that episode would just kind of like logistically pan out. So like henchmen can get killed. It doesn't matter, but actual villains in the book, they say, Oh, it's like the mob, you know, like we got to go and take names and we got to, you know, figure out how to get, uh, how to get justice. So combining that with the, uh, the typical bureaucracy of the guild. Um, and then again, we have this season six, very New York kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of this plot is driven by how easy it is to have your car towed when you park around Columbus circle. <laughs> it, yeah it is it is car shit <laughs> uh car shit and new york shit uh there uh ends up being a pretty fun episode if not you know great for like there, there's something uh reading in the book about them trying to lay additional track mm-hmm. for the blue morpho thing unlocks something for me in that i love the body of the episodes of this this mid period of the season but the stingers all suck yeah, yeah. like Every post credit stinger is the worst thing in the world. <laughs> you know, the worst thing in the episode. Yeah. And it's because they're all after the fact, uh, just like we need to hammer this home enough. Yes. The idea is Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch is slowly piecing together these clues for this big mystery. For me, that falls really flat. Like the actual climax of it, mm-hmm. uh, Party for Tarzan, when we get there, is fine. Yep. And Red Mean Stop, fine. Uh, you know, the stuff that happens is good, but I think that um this ends up just making there are no jokes and it just ends up making Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch seem kind of lame. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which I, yeah. which I don't care for. I, I like that they, what they end up doing on the way to that. Yeah. You know, laying more track ended up having this, you know, this episode where we get really good think tank stuff next episode where we get really lovely Hank stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that ends up being worthwhile in the end. Yeah, yeah. And it's a bummer because they swung at something which is good, which is having Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch have her own plot. You know, if she actually competently tried to piece this stuff together instead of immediately jumping to um, uh, kind of a pretty arbitrary conclusion, um, it would have been neat to see her operating. And instead, she's just kind of always, you know, a couple of steps behind and it's kind of belaboring it. And not being able to see through the monarch who is a gigantic dumbass. Yes. And a horrible liar and just like as transparent as hell. Like they're just Mm -hmm. doing dumb sitcom stuff left and right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, and she's just like, I don't know. <laughs> like they, they've turned her into uh, a dumb neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a fun, um, there's a fun yeah. moment in the commentary where doc is talking about how he listens to uh, commentaries. You know, he is, he is the one of the two of them that listens to commentaries and it's like, Oh yeah, I can, I put them on while I'm falling asleep or while I'm doing other stuff. And Jack's like, Ooh boy, have I got uh, a, a, a medium to pitch to you? Do you listen to podcasts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he says that he's like, he doesn't like them because you don't learn about movies yeah, uh, through them, which is fair. But then yes. I was thinking that I actually listen to these uh, commentaries like a podcast. True. Yeah. Like, exactly. So it's like, oh, okay. you know, <laughs> fair that's, point, that's Doc. Fair. I've also yeah. never listened to podcasts to fall asleep. I've yeah. never gotten that. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I, um, it, I think it, it just depends. I used to, I used to uh, watch TV to fall asleep. And now I, uh, you know, I'll put a podcast on and. With the with the sleep timer, usually in about a half hour, I'm down with my new medicine. So, if it's words, I can't I can't sleep while words are being said to me. Oh, huh. I They're can't have to listen to words. I can't sleep with music. Yeah, I, music is tough too. I, I like I just need white noise. Yeah, like I, it has to be contentless. It's nothing <laughs> I can think about. Yeah, because if it's giving me something to think about, it's the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, you know, brains are weird. It's always been strange to me. Yeah, it's always been strange to me. People like listen to like, oh, I fall asleep too, and then they'll describe something very compelling. <laughs> you know what? what the fuck? Yeah, like, yeah. Does you want to know what happens next? <laughs> you know, you just fall asleep to Better Call Saul. Don't worry. What the fuck are you talking? Yeah, what about? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, the, I just, I just, I put on the the finale of of uh, Breaking Bad to fall asleep every night, uh, and I, I have it time off as soon as it goes to Crystal Blue Persuasion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, oh. Other other than that little little cute anecdote, uh, absolutely valueless couple of commentaries. Yes, yeah, nothing of value to be found. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's get into it. Let's do. Uh, we have our cold open, and Doctor Girlfriend is leaving the house for council business and berating her husband for being uh, a layabout. You know, she is uh, overwhelmed by the amount of work that she has to do, and she sees the monarch just kind of sleeping all day. He hasn't taken off that robe. Yeah. You know, uh, and he, he says that it's work managing the contractors, which is bullshit, <laughs> you know, and then pivot, pivots to like, I'm not going to work if I can't arch Dr. Venture. You know, you told me that you would bump me up and yeah. she's like, I can't bump you up if you don't do something. <laughs> you know, they're in this, this stalemate. It's like the line in vacation. Uh, you know, Eddie is Eddie's been unemployed for 12 years because he's looking for a position in management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> 21 is just kind of sitting right there and uh, she says, you got to prove, prove, prove to the council and me that you're worthy of being a 10. And then, uh, kind of leaves on this kind of stinging note saying, you know, I, I married the monarch. I don't even know who this person is. Right. It's a nasty fight. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's got a good point. Like does. I wanted to see this develop further. The monarch yeah. is not being a good husband. No, here. he does not deserve Dr. And Mrs. The monarch. Nope. Uh, the monarch gets frustrated and says, you know, go to the Morpho cave. He's going to show her, you know, and ba the idea is he's going to start amp up his getting rid of the villain so he can actually do the thing he wants to do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we could have DeBrock waking up uh, at Warianas. Uh, he's got a whip, like a pony, like a butt plug mm -hmm. uh, thing in his ass uh, there because, you know, there's there's butt stuff. Uh, and he's like, oh, geez. You know, <laughs> uh, in the book, they describe Brock as very meat and potatoes when it comes to sex. And Makes I think sense. that's probably pretty pretty good description you know <laughs> pound 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 sleep yeah yeah uh he uh he tries to sneak out oriana's working in the living room and she's like hey there's coffee he's like hey uh you know i wasn't trying to sneak oh you're still here take that coffee to go heracles like she's real cold uh, yeah to him yeah he finally found somebody uh less interested in pillow talk than he is yeah i like the way that this ends up working out mm -hmm. yeah. um Dr. Mrs. The Monarch then goes to Vendak Tower around the same time uh, to grab her uh, twisted corpse <laughs> from the lobby, the whole floor, uh, and tells Rusty, like, hey, your response is, is way overboard. Yeah. Uh, he denies it, but she's like, this has Death by Samson written all over it. Right, right. Um, he starts hitting on her because she dresses up like a Nazi, much like Alton Brown does during Camp Cutthroat. <laughs> um, <laughs> like... Just dreaming to be be a be a Nazi. Uh, he calls her Fraulein. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a it's a snappy outfit she has on. It is the weird connotations. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, they decide to make her a Nazi she wolf of the SS. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I love a uh, hungover Brock. 
uh, here. Seeing her and trying like, to draw his knife and then saying it's too much yeah, trouble. Uh, he's just too hungover from God gas. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. It's just that ah, whatever. Uh, and he, he, he backs Rusty up saying, hey, we got nothing to do with Orangutan's death. Um, uh, but he won't hand over the security tape. She says, yeah, we could clear the, we could clear this up, but you know, he's not going to hand over the security to the, to the guild. Uh, they're going to know where all the, where all the cameras are and stuff. It's bad news. Yeah. Uh, she gets ready to leave. Uh, she runs into, uh, Dean. it's Dean yeah. actually. Yeah. Carrying flowers. Um, she crushes them and thinks he, you know, like father, like son, thinking he's hitting on her. But they were flowers for Uncle Hatred, <laughs> just, in the hospital. These are for Uncle Hatred. Yeah. No, after, uh, oh my gosh, the repeated headbutting that Herringatan gave him, uh, gave him yeah. uh, last time. Yeah. Uh, the Watch and Ward have Rusty hide a form for the retrieval. Uh, they give him their pen, their helpful pen, mm-hmm. and give them the number for the helpful hate line uh, so they can troll him later. Uh, the guild giving out pen is a weird sub-theme of this episode. <laughs> yeah. I like that quite a bit. The, the new guild yeah. handing out pens left and right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Very cute. Yeah. Uh, Rusty notices that Brock is walking strangely again because of the butt stuff and says, oh, are you experiencing uh, anal leakage? You know, just pumping them for side effects. Yeah, I don't need another Alestra on my hands. Do, do we need to describe the Alestra controversy for anybody oh, yeah. born after 1997? Be, I mean, be, <laughs> before we do that, though, this has one of my favorite Patrick Warburton things. There's a little talk over where he's like, no, maybe I. And like just under his breath is like, maybe I am. You know, uh, he says very confident about it. And then he's like, I don't know. Uh, I love that little bit of them talking over each other. It's real good. Um, Alester is a fat substitute that caused diarrhea. Yeah. Uh, uh in, oh. involuntary diarrhea, not the kind of diarrhea you sign up for, but the kind of <laughs> diarrhea that just signs up for you. <laughs> not the kind of di- <laughs> Hey Gary, were you signing yeah. up for diarrhea? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, this is the kind of diarrhea that signs up for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it wasn't At just the Olympics. Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, it wasn't just diarrhea it was oily discharge so it just yeah. uh, effectively it's a fat but your body couldn't process it and so you know like you could it just slipped on through yeah yeah oh yeah just just uh just just, just ran through you like it was uh like it was bacon grease uh but uh yeah. but yeah just uh kind of came out the back and ruined uh ruined underpants and stuff it was you know uh, it was it, real bad yeah the uh the not very good show mad tv the only funny thing I remember from it mm-hmm. is they had a sketch about Alestra, new improved Alestra, which has 10% less anal leakage. <laughs> and they're like, let's illustrate it. And then they had two gigantic pitchers of iced tea with lemons and ice floating in them. <laughs> and they, and one slightly less full. And they just poured them both into a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> and like they both just overflowed, but one overflowed like just ten percent less. And they're like ten percent less. That's the confidence you can believe it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like very. I love the idea of like splitting the difference on how much anal leakage you're willing to have. <laughs> I'll, I'll accept a lot of it, but not this much. No, I mean, you know? uh, uh, the, uh, life is lived on the margins. You know, it's a uh, the yeah. ten percent makes, makes a difference. The poison. Yeah, what would have yeah. uh, you know what what have you made ten percent more money? Makes a big difference for a lot yeah. of people. Now, instead of yeah. the money, it is a mysterious oil that scientists made. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's not going into your bank account. Yeah, it's going into your butt. Yeah, and out of your butt. It's getting smeared. And on it's your, not ten percent uh, more. It's ten percent less. Right, right. It's it's you know? it's being yeah. smeared all over your car seat, your office chair, yeah. a loved one. Yeah, ten <laughs> percent is a is a good rate in today's economy. <laughs> oh, you know, t- in today's economy. Yeah, ten percent. Uh, I there's just a very funny sketch for that like horrible wretched show. <laughs> like, just like very very good. I love the iced tea. It was very good. Yeah. Um, the implication that Doc invented that is very in line with the kind of shit he invents. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a, along with the Project Prometheus or whatever. We just got livers coming out the yin yang. Yeah. 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 Uh, pirate captain comes in and says the good ship Ventec has hit a bit of a PR iceberg. Uh, and there's another very dated reference here. Yeah. I was, um, I was shocked was when I saw this uh, again. I forgot that they did Billy as David Hasselhoff in 2016. I know 10 years too late guys. Yeah. This is wild. Uh, yeah. It's Billy coming down off God gas, eating a cheeseburger yeah. uh, a long time ago. There's an old man named David Hasselhoff and he got really drunk and ate a cheeseburger on the floor 
uh, and there was a video of it. His daughter. And this is what we had instead of news back in the day. <laughs> His daughter um, uh, filmed the video to show him to shame him, and it got out. Yeah, just yeah. like, hey, the, this this is what you turn into when you're drunk, Dad. Like, yeah, who made flour burgers, man? <laughs> like, <laughs> at least eat over the sink, you piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, what are you, you doing? Eat over the sink like a human. Oh yeah. my gosh, even animals notice shit in the corner. Yeah, David. <laughs> Yeah. So they're watching this on the J-pad and cut over to Action Man's apartment where all the oldsters are uh, watching this video and laughing. Oh, poor Billy. You know, he walks out like, oh, my yeah. gosh, did you feel did you film that last night? He's still feeling bad. He's got the he's got the hangover, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love this. Rose answers the door and calls for him. Hey, Bill, Bill, there's a Nazi here to see you. <laughs> Yeah, it's very cute. Uh, this is Dr. Mrs. The Monarch there to uh, to question him right. since he was there. Uh, we cut over to a joke they threatened to make in the book mm-hmm. they finally made uh, where a phone rings the Newark mayor's office yeah. and Janner opens up a bust of the city founder and finds a red phone receiver, of course, referencing the 60s Batman mm-hmm. uh, yeah. show where he had a direct line to the mayor's office. Yeah. Weirdly, it was a statue of uh, in Batman. It was a statue of William Shakespeare. Like, yeah. And, and it wasn't for Batman to call the mayor. It was just for the mayor to call Batman. Uh huh. You know, uh, here it, it works both ways. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so uh, 21 hangs up uh, and the monarch is going through all the old gear. You know, the, uh, the Green Hornet was a gadget based superhero. Um, it was uh, it was his, his chauffeur. Uh, I want to say Kano, but that is not him. What was the Green Her- Green Hornet's uh, uh, buddy's name? K- Kano. Uh, K- Kato? Kato. K- yeah, Kato. There we go. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Kato. Yeah. Like the Institute. Or Kalen. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh but it was it was Kato who did all of the uh all the physical stuff uh monarch's like hey what does this thing do and it's like a big extendable arm with a with a hinge on it and i was like oh is that a back scratcher or something they're just going through it trying to figure it out yeah that, that ends up being a real limp payoff i think yes uh, i do not like that joke no um, I do like the joke of them using the laptop and not using the crime computer because the <laughs> crime computer is from the 60s uh, and is has no memory to it. There is no There's internet really... because there was no internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it, it, it's, it's basically a speak and spell. Um, there's a good uh, Marvel comic that takes all of these old heroes and puts them together. Uh, and one of them is an old is like an old like robot man from the sixties and he runs around bragging about his 56 K of memory <laughs> that he has. That's real good. <laughs> like, it's like how in, um, he's how, constantly forgetting things. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so, like how in neuromancer, like the entire plot uh, hinges on a bounty of like, you can get two megabytes of Ram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, I love that shit. Yeah. It's so quaint. <laughs> uh, it's very good. Oh gosh. <laughs> so uh he's checking and uh twenty one is found. Wild Whale Wide Whale has contracted his arching rights out, uh, you know, to sub arches through the uh through the guild's fiends and family plan, uh, which is which is yes. cute. Um yeah. and okay, we got all these guys. It's like a big org chart. Uh if we're gonna make this happen, we gotta we gotta step up the pace. We gotta go killing these folks. Uh but twenty one yeah. is it's not sitting right what happened to uh orangutan. Yeah, I, I, I have mixed feelings about this a yeah. little bit here with 21 uh, because the idea is, you know, 21 kind of flirted with being a good guy and stuff. And you could say, like, he never killed anybody. Um, he thought he did. Mm-hmm. There's like a part, uh, like, there's a thing with Hank where he's like, I hate killing you, dude. Yeah. You know, he thinks he's killing people. Like, this this doesn't read very well to me. It feels like a, uh, like a then, sloppy retcon a little bit. A little bit that and a little bit... Uh, the monarch, this would have been a good opportunity, I feel like, for the monarch to, like, this is, him being really callous about this shit is the stuff that made 21 leave him. Mm-hmm. You know, the monarch hasn't changed. Right. Like, it, it's, you know, him, I would have liked this more if 21 was like, I don't want to keep doing this, and the monarch showed a little bit of softness. Like, even mm-hmm. when the monarch is given something to do, he's still so incredibly one note. Yeah. Even on the, the Venture Brothers cartoon curve, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we're getting... uh with Brock, the reason why that's so cool is that Brock is usually the one who loves him and leaves him, mm-hmm. you know, makes all those kids on Spanakopita. <laughs> uh, having him with a strong woman who does, is not interested in him is like, takes his character to an interesting place. Mm-hmm. 
the monarch is getting this kind of weird hero arc, but it's just about the costume that he wears. He's yes. still just doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. He's doing it so he can fight Dr. Venger. He doesn't care about 21. He's a shitty husband. Like he's just an unchanging character. Yeah. You know, and he's, and he's, you know, that sounds like a silly complaint on this fun cartoon about goofs, but he's kind of the only one, mm-hmm. you know, this season is really about recontextualizing characters and, and like Dean changes a lot. Mm-hmm. Hank changes a lot. You know, these, Monarch doesn't. No, nope. and it's a it's a bummer. Yeah, because yeah. there there's interesting stuff they could do. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's just a disappointment comes from expectations not met. <sighs> yeah, and just the uh, met expectations that they set. Yes, you know, with with the curve of their show. Yeah. Um. So uh, they kind of go back and forth on this. The monarch's like, "No, you're a super villain. We have to kill." He's like, "Hey, should we kill Manolo? <laughs> He's seen the cave." Uh, how dare you? <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you do not touch uh, Manolo. <laughs> uh, he's like, plus I think he's padding his invoices and, uh, 21's like, Oh, he does quality work. You're paying for quality. <laughs> uh, good contractor. Yeah. I'll no. fuck with Manolo. Oh, if, if you find a good contractor, you keep that person in your life. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they want to go get the Morpho mobile back from the impound lot. So they can do this stuff. But they they can't because they don't have the Morpho mobile. They're going to take the Morpho scooters, but then they'll just have to make another trip back. <laughs> uh, so they're like, oh, we do have Metro cards. Almost leading into, you know, kind of leading into another goddamn New York transit joke. Right. Uh, right. But we don't spend as much time with it. No, time. no. We don't see them in costume on the on the subway or what have you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so up in space. Uh, the, on the meteor, Doctor Mrs. The Monarch is hologramming in, explaining, "Hey, Billy, Billy didn't have anything useful." Uh, and I, I love Phantom Moon saying, "Not mm-hmm. surprising, since he was hippie tripping on Doctor Venture's good time goof gas." I love good time goof gas. <laughs> I would do some good, good time goof gas. Uh, have I got good news for you about nitrous oxide, my friend? Yeah, uh, yeah. I keep trying to find a dentist that will do it to me, but uh, <laughs> well, no, nobody he... likes to advertise it anymore because it's. I guess it's kind of medieval. It feels like it's very old school now. <laughs> you, know? you can get an approximation of that. Just go out and get some whipped cream chargers. Yeah, yeah. I'll just do it myself before I go into the dentist. <laughs> because they'll give you those, those pills uh they've given me a pill before they give me a pill before my vasectomy but I didn't do anything mm-hmm. like and i say that like maybe i would have been more nervous having my balls cut open if <sighs> i didn't have the pill maybe. but it wasn't like a comfortable relaxing experience i want to go into a fugue state oh yeah no i want the you know? i want what happened when i got my wisdom teeth uh, taken out which is just a loop of tape was cut like it was yeah. just me sitting there like, oh, this needle hurts. And then in the car, like, oh, God, I'm drooling. <laughs> That's, I, I want that so bad. And I want them to do all of it. Yeah. Like literally just fix the whole thing. Like put me in a week, week of surgery and give me a, like seven weight mates. Oh, yeah. And then I just wake up with it all done. And maybe I'm sore for a couple of days. I take a couple mm-hmm. sick days, but it's oh. done. Oh, yeah. Just let me moon night. Like just moon night my way through this. Yes. <laughs> fix it. <laughs> you fuckers i hate doctors oh my god um the uh you know billy uh all she got from billy was they had a vision of the blue morpho but nobody believes that because he's dead right yeah, well, yeah. it's not possible uh she says she can't get the venture security tapes and wide whale hologrammed in and says that he can do that because he left a few bugs inside the venture place so he can get the tapes right uh hank overhears this but this doesn't really pay out he's just no. he's just the, it's weird because yeah. he looked wide whales at the restaurant where you know where hank works uh and he's he's just there in his disguise as a waiter so i made a note and i was like man where would that hank stuff go hank doesn't really factor yeah. into this one <laughs> no it feels like it's a leftover draft thing it feels like yeah, yeah. you know uh just real weird mm-hmm. um Wide Whale is going to go ahead and take care of that. Uh, Dr. Mrs. The Monarch says, I'm going to go inform the widow orangutan. <laughs> uh, the widow orangutan is a phrase I've never, I don't get sick of during this episode. No, no, I, I really yeah. enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, and then Red Mantle expresses uh, confusion and disgust. <laughs> Why didn't anyone tell me we could just hologram in, which is the crazy, you know, the fun thing about the meteor base. Like, oh, we've, we've got to go through a shuttle had to go to space. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. <laughs> uh, the other important part in the scene is that they they all are doubting Doctor Mrs. The Monarch, right? Like yeah. they say, like you know, you should take some time off. This is getting to you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know if it's here or if it's a little bit later where a Phantom Limb is like your husband's obsession with Doctor Venture is rubbed off on you. Like, right? You know, you are you need to chill. Yeah. So eventually she'll be vindicated. But this is another little breadcrumb in, in them setting that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, so she goes off to comfort the widow orangutan, uh, watching Ward uh, or her chauffeurs. Uh, they drop her off uh, at her place, which is a bar called Ye Old Battle Axe. That is uh, that is her mm-hmm. name. Uh, derogatory term for a for, for, for an angry older woman, I think. Is that the context I, for that? It, it, that's the context. I don't know how like. It's derogatory, but I don't know if it's yeah. like it's like in the same class as like, like I, I wasn't saying it was like a, 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 like a, a offensive, like but true. It, it's like calling somebody, you know, it, it is the oh, she's mean version of like, oh, you dingbat, like, oh, you're flighty, right? I it's not it's it's not dingbat or flighty. It's mean. No, oh, I mean, it's I'm like just, a true. No, I'm saying it's a, the equivalent. Like it's uh, like oh. this is to this as this is to this. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's it's a uh, yeah. I mean, it means like a like a shrewish yeah, yeah mean wife. Um, I like battle axe. <laughs> the way yeah. the, the way that she plays Doctor Mrs. The Modern Fiddle is so good. It's a uh, it's very funny the way that uh, the the book talks about Irish people. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. um, it, it's it's based on Irish people, and then like kind of out of nowhere. Jackson's like every Irish person I know is like this. They're constantly <laughs> yelling at you, but they have the hugest heart. And if something makes them cry, they are really big about it. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Like, like every Irish person you know is like this. Um, huh? Okay, all right. That's uh, that's yeah. data. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a trope. Like this is yeah, you know the, the, the Irish yeah. couple. You he, he mentions a uh, fairy tale of New York. Like mm-hmm. this is this is a trope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, when they go in, though, we can't we can't bypass Watch and Ward being go. This is always tough. Uh, and he's like, "Remember man grenades, widow? Yes. <laughs> I still can't go through metal detectors. How good is man grenade? Man grenade's great. I love man grenade. <laughs> yeah. and, and his widow has similar powers, I guess. So she goes. It's off so too. good. Man grenade, woman grenade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, um so yeah, I'm still can't get through metal detectors. What about your goggle port ward? Ward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh so she goes in to talk to, to Battle Axe. Uh and the idea is, you know, she's this Scottish woman, and she at first thinks, you know, oh, whatever he did, you know, he's just drunk. Mm-hmm. And uh she has to kind of cut through and be like, you know, you know, he's actually dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and she starts uh doing the you know, a big uh, bereavement, big uh, showy. Whoa! Oh, look at that whale. It is uh, ghastly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was me, man. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Who, uh, she wants to know who uh, killed him. And Dr. and Mrs. Monarch is like, we don't know, but we're going to find out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then she mentions, she says, hey, I need you to go uh, help me find uh, my husband's haranga tank. <laughs> uh, also very good. Yeah. Um, he never arches without it. And she's at this point, it's very clear. She's putting on a show. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's watching. She's watching Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch. Yeah. She's, 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 she's going back and forth between being uh, kind of like a regular affect and, you know, sobbing and just like watching Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch's reaction to try and maximize her discomfort. Right. Yeah. She's a mark. You know, mm-hmm. they, they talk about in the book, this is a contrast between Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch, who is a very high class, upper ranking guild person and uh, Battle Axe, who is, you know, more working class and uh, more like a regular person. Like when Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch first comes in, she's like, our dues are paid up. Yes. You know, I know that I know the drill. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, good, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't underline it too far, but it's there. Yeah. Uh, we cut over to Dean. Uh, he's in class at uh, Stuyvesant University, and it's his philosophy course that is being taught by Professor Nidaba. Uh, he's mm-hmm. up there. Uh, what a terrible class! Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's very funny. Uh, it, it's based on like uh, based a little bit on Cornell West mm-hmm. is the idea behind the visual design mm-hmm. uh, here. But he he does the it's a philosophy class, and of course he's a philosophy teacher, so he fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. And he's uh, you know talking about Nietzsche talking about everyone you must wear the the frightening mask yeah you know before that does anyone know who this is I <laughs> uh, hear uh just being a showy professor right like got a razzle dazzle him <laughs> and he it, 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 obviously just like okay this guy's this <laughs> this guy's part he's of the a huge head. yeah he's got a gigantic yeah. head tiny body it's like how oh, we got a modoc going on right yeah yeah and every um, and, and every and, other professor and a lot of the students are also in the super science world. So I love it. <laughs> I, it's it's uh, it's it's New York, baby. Um, he gets a little uh, thing on his Apple Watch uh, that says, "Since Harangatan is dead, he's next in line. He can arch Doctor Venture." Uh, so he dismisses uh, the class because he wants to prepare, um, and he uh, he stops Dean, 
you know, he's saying, I read your paper. Uh, how did you read it? I just read it. He's like, it is truly terrible. <laughs> uh, you know, it's an awful paper. He's trying to save Dean. Yes. Uh, as, in terms of dudes, like Think Tank is a pretty good guy. Yeah. Just like there's the villains. There's no reason for my arch's kid to get wrapped up in this. I'm not a, I'm not Dr. Z, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he, he does the Sherlock Holmes, Robert Downey Jr. thing of <laughs> mind reading where somebody's been by finding dust on their sleeve. Yeah. It's like, oh, you smell yeah. of antiseptic and I see, uh, and I see pollen on your left sleeve. You were at the hospital, hospital and you took uh, somebody flowers, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, he's like, you know, you should go find some peace, you know, before the test tomorrow, maybe by getting out of the house between nine and ten thirty PM. He <laughs> uh, doesn't want the, the kid to get hurt. Very specific. Yeah. Uh Nadabo's good. Uh while, while still being associated with the guild. Yeah. Uh he uh he opens up his secret thing to get his in his tank there and he <laughs> says it was Nietzsche. How do the kids not know that? It was Nietzsche. Um yeah. if you ever hear an ed- edgelord philosopher, yes. Nietzsche. Yeah. Um, to God, the performance on Think Tank, the way that everything is very quiet. Uh, apparently mm-hmm. Jeffrey Wright was like really strange for them to work with because he did way more takes than they wanted him to. Uh, and he took it really seriously, but he was also like goofing around with it. Like he knew he was there for a comedy, but like just professional and really trying to nail it. And like the characterization of, 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 of Think Tank being lonely, was was jeffrey wright who brought that there like who played that up and kind of put that color on it like jackson didn't really realize that's what was going on until he heard that performance yeah jeffrey jeffrey wright is great yeah uh he's he's wonderful in uh the not very good show deadwood Mm -hmm. he's like the best part of it um they refer to him in the book they talk about how they found out about him through boardwalk and empire Mm -hmm. which i've not seen but uh it makes me want to see it because i like jeffrey wright do you say deadwood's not very good not Deadwood. Boardwalk Empire is what I meant to say. Okay. I might have said Deadwood. Yeah. I meant you... to say Boardwalk Empire. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Uh, not Deadwood. Uh, fuck. He's in uh, 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 Westworld. Westworld. Okay. Which is not very good. Oh, That's yeah. what I meant to say. Yeah. He's Bernard in that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's great. Like, he's mm-hmm. the most interesting character in it. Like, he's, he's wonderful. It's the one good twist mm-hmm. that works in that whole nightmare show. <laughs> um, you know? <laughs> and, like, he's really good in it. But, yeah, mm-hmm. Westworld. Deadwood is awesome. Yeah. I was, was, no, uh, was going to say, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been replaced. <laughs> I've been scrolled. Oh, gosh. So, <laughs> cut over. Uh, Dr. M- Mr. The Mark has uh, figured out where the uh, where the harangue tank is. Uh, it has several unpaid parking tickets, and the police have impounded it. Again, like, <laughs> they're going to go there uh, to this actual, you know, it's modeled after the real police impound. Uh, but, like, it's full of villain cars, like Scorpio's cars there and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Monarch is like, okay, go pay the tickets. He'll take care of it. She goes to leave and Battleax cries saying she shouldn't drive alone. Would you drive me? Um, then she goes back and gets changed and dresses up as Braveheart. <laughs> uh, Dr. Mrs. The Monarch gets an email from Wide Whale. That's the venture security footage. She starts watching it, but doesn't finish. Right. Uh, so this isn't being important. So the laptop can be open later. It's a little clunky, mm-hmm. but her starting this video and it's saving the place in the video is a plot point. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, over at the impound, the monarch who is dressed up as the blue morpho, uh, darts the desk guard. Uh, this, <laughs> I thought the wiki was just being goofy by saying that this desk guard was, uh, an allusion to Frank Oz in, uh, the blues brothers. I was like, come on guys, there can be other desk guards. No, they say it in the book. So it's, it's, it's a, uh, melding between Frank Oz from blues brothers and the, uh, the police officer guy from, uh, Terminator 2. Mm-hmm. The fat guy who has the twin. Yep. <laughs> they also plays the twin scientist in Gremlins too. Weird. Uh, no. It's before um, it's it's before they could uh it's before they could digitally double people. Yeah. So you they had actually to hire... had to hire that guy <laughs> for all their twins. <laughs> like, you know. Oh man. Uh, uh, so I took these next bits, uh, it kind of cuts back and forth between these different places. I just, I, I disentangled them cause it's easier to talk about with, without saying, and then over and then over and then over. So just, just yeah. so people know, yeah. we're going to swap these. Yeah. Uh, the, the monarch, the you know, blue morpho shows up at the place, uh, darts, the guard gets inside and they're looking for the morpho mobile. 
you know, they can't find it. Uh, they, they may, they say, oh, you better hurry up. Those poison darts are from the seventies. If it didn't kill him at any moment, he might wake up feeling groovy, uh, <laughs> good delivery. And the guard, uh, of course does wake up looking at the darts and then battle axe smashes through the window <laughs> and, uh, knock, knocks him out. And Ms. The Mongers, like, you could have just paid the fine. <laughs> and she's like, I hate coppers. Uh, and just kind of goes through. It's, it's you know, Fair good. Enough. Battle hacks. <laughs> Says they can. <laughs> um, at Ventec Tower, Brock is sitting in for hatred. Again, he was in traction. Uh, and he's mm-hmm. watching uh, a live broadcast. Pirate Captain is giving uh, an interview, denying, oh, we, we ain't made no god gas. Uh, saying that kind wow. of stuff. And it's funny because on the CNBC style show, uh, the host is Warriana. It's her alter ego. And Brock is like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. Uh, he recognizes her immediately, of course. Yeah. Uh, Think Tank scans him, you know, sees that he's, you know, he's not paying attention and then uh, drives up the side of the building <laughs> to get right up to Rusty. Rusty's on the phone with Billy yelling at him for cutting Ventex stock value in half that <laughs> your cheeseburger stunt cost us half a million dollars or whatever. Um, it's not Billy's fault at all. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, and think tank blows through the penthouse and corners him there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, he radio, Rusty radios Brock to get and Brock gets in the elevator and says, doc, get to the panic room. Uh, and he cannot because he has the think tank cannon pointed directly at his head. <laughs> that is not an option. That's what he says. Yeah. There's fun, fun stuff with the cannon. I like the other one, uh, the later one a little bit better, but this is good. Uh, oh, but think tank immediately good. apologizes like the, the, the cannon turret drops and he says, Oh, I'm sorry about my dramatic entry. Um, but he talks in chess metaphors, you know, just a bold opening makes for a more interesting game. And like out of a little compartment, um, comes this little oh, chess board, little chess. <laughs> Jeff Dispenser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> he just kind of goes over to the couch and just he sits there. He's like, um, I just, I, I just, uh, I, I, I have not I gone up against anybody who can match my intellect. I'm finally, uh, you know, uh, against a man of science. Uh, I, I hope this is going to be an interesting game. And boy, yeah. Think Tank has an entirely incorrect concept of who yeah. Rusty Venture is and what he is about. We got another thing coming. The uh, he so it, it's so because you know Doctor Venture, right? You yeah. know, by by from the outside, you would think he would be a science hero, like intellectual. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Rusty's an idiot, and you know Rusty's like, I you know I don't really play. I'm more of a parcheesy guy. <laughs> uh, and then you know, so this deflates him, and then immediately is like, Hey, can we just move things along? Like he was going to have this nice evening watching cable and yelling at Billy. Uh, Think Tank starts quoting Nietzsche at this point, uh, and just the the resignation in his voice, yeah, you know, is so so sad. Uh, he starts quoting uh, Nietzsche, and Rusty decides to call the hate line yep. to get him. <laughs> Just move along, to, to, you be, know? to be fair, if somebody started quoting Nietzsche at me, I would uh, immediately consult the authorities. <laughs> we need to yeah. stop this. And they pull out a guitar afterwards. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Guitar Nietzsche? <laughs> the worst supervillain, man. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. So, they should keep all of the guitars in a college campus on one side of the campus and all the philosophy majors on another. Oh, and never the twain and shall meet. never let them meet. Yeah. yeah, like the beams and Ghostbusters. Like, oh, yeah. You cannot put them together. Matter and antimatter. If the if the if the two of them touch, boom, annihilation. You're yeah. we're done for. Yeah. Straight <laughs> straight to gutter town. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh but <laughs> <laughs> but uh i love this bit but just the gag with rusty thinking he's calling an actual helpline but it's watching ward fucking with him <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, just... they just set out to do this whole thing uh, yeah. basically just uh doing the classic customer service you know fuck with thing like can you hold yeah. and impersonating a, a recording like it's now <laughs> easier than ever to, to pay, pay your guild dues or whatever <laughs> to pay Have them you, online uh, yeah. ever heard one of those uh messages that doesn't say our options have recently changed no i mean Do you know what I'm, talking about? I, 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 I'm i'm sure that i have but it feels like every one of them does say that it's weird i feel like that's like, one of please listen carefully because our options have recently changed no I, they haven't i've been calling this vet for <laughs> 10 years i feel like that's one of those yeah. things where they just kind of like have to say that in order to like uh m- maybe trick somebody into listening so they don't hit the wrong thing um, kind of like yeah. if you call tech support, they're like, Hey, is it plugged in? Cause like, you would be really surprised at how many people didn't plug it in, you know? Yeah. And covering their ass. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah, I just, I, I, I love them kicking them back and forth and rusty being way too patient for it. 
Um, but uh, the the elevator door opens. Think Tank fires at it, but Brock isn't there. Instead, he gets the uh, the the jump on him, and the fight starts. Um, uh, yep. Brock bounces off of his energy shield, his force field. Uh, we cut back over to the parking lot. Battle Axe opens up the door to the Haranga tank, which is based on the turtle van. Uh, <laughs> in terms of shape. Um, and uh, all these bottles fall out. Uh, yeah. It's disgusting in there. You know, it still smells like him. Whis- whiskey, cheap Chinese cigarettes and the sweat of a man who may or may not be part ape. I love that so much. <laughs> it's a real good line. Yeah. Uh, but this wasn't just their arching mobile. This was where they lived together. Uh, you know, it's a, that's an RV. Uh, and as battle Axe is going into more about that, they're interrupted because they hear a loud noise. There's crashing. Um, and Dr. Mrs. The monarch sees the source. It's blue Morpho kind of just, uh, um, uh, bumbling around. And then she goes chasing him. Yeah. Uh, this leaves battle Axe in the Haringa tank drinking whiskey. And she's like, miss, miss prissy posh lad. Won't mind if I check me email. <laughs> uh, which is also just kind of a weird moment. It's it's 2016 where everyone has a phone. Uh huh. You know, uh, it's just a, such a weird little like plot contrivance to have her halfway through the video mm-hmm. and then also have Battle Axe, the character, be interested in checking her email at this exact moment. <laughs> like, it's a, I'm going to give him a little cinema sin for that one. Ding. Uh, <laughs> ding. Uh, but she, when she does it, she sees the video, uh, and she sees the blue Morpho and rusty together and sees already done. Their goatees the same are the same. So yeah. she puts it together before, uh, Dr. Mrs. The monarch does. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the monarch and 21, they hide. Um, uh, but because they had found the Morpho mobile, they hide in the Morpho mobile, which is a dumb idea. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Mrs. The monarch, uh, points that out. You shouldn't have hidden a place that has your fucking face on it. Yeah. I, I love that. Like, she's like, I'm not fucking kidding around. Like, get out. <laughs> she pulls a Luger on them, completing the Nazi ensemble. Yeah. Uh, Nazi misses the monarch has a Luger. <laughs> uh, 21 starts the car to go. And she's like, yeah, good luck. You're not going to get very far with a boot on your, your window, you know, or on your car or on your wheel. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, she's going to go ahead and shoot him. The monarch ducks and hits a red button and doesn't know what it does, but it activates the car's flight function. It's a flying car. <laughs> yeah. The wheels kick out boot off the boot and they uh take off yes so point. she goes running for the orangutan but battle x uh pulls away to head to venture tower she wants to get her revenge um and then yes. um the morphomobile flies off in the in the other direction dr miss the monarch has watch and ward go after the blue uh the blue flying car the blue flying morphomobile yeah uh we get the implication that think tank and brock have been fighting during this and they've gotten caught up in this stalemate <laughs> Out. I love this. Brock has his arm cut in the shield. You know, he's trying to swing his knife, but it's it's the equivalent of like when the big guy holds the little guy's head back. Yeah. And the little guy has to swing his arms around, but mm-hmm. can't reach him. Yeah. It happens in cartoons. Love yeah. that stuff. But Brock's the one who says it's a stalemate. And he's like, no, this is not a stalemate. Your position is untenable. Uh, it's like, you know, I could just turn on my force field and cut off your arm. He's like, yeah, you'd be drowning my blood. Now who's untenable? Like Brock is way into it. Mm-hmm. And the delivery think tank goes like, I have an energy cannon pressed up against your chest. Like he does it. Like the delivery is really good. Uh, uh, and, and, and Brock's like, I could dodge it. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> the timing like, on it's great. Like there's just a beat as he makes the, as he's like process, like, Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, of course he can't. I'm sure and, his chest plate takes the majority of it. <laughs> and cuts over to rusty in the foreground on the, the watch having been hung up on by watching ward. And then you just see Brock fly by in the background. <laughs> it's really well directed. Like I don't yeah. oftentimes notice the direction, mm-hmm. uh, in this episode, but the, this action stuff is, is really well done in this. This is yeah. a big Jackson strength. Yeah, just just blast it out the side of them. <laughs> I mean, and it's like it's presented as a gag, but it has it has implications uh, <laughs> because Brock thinks he's falling to his death, but he wakes, he opens his eyes uh, and sees that Warriana has caught him. You know, she was she was out on patrol. It's nighttime um, and she feels awkward about how this morning went. You know, she's like, hey, yeah. I, I really. Sorry, sorry about that. I'm not really into pillow talk and I've got so much going on with, you know, my career and my alter ego and my alter ego's career. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a nightmare uh-huh. to, to be a superhero. It's one of the, the things that I, I like about that, uh, the new Batman movie. It's like mm-hmm. a Batman who hasn't slept in six years. Yeah. Oh, it's the, you it's know, can the, you imagine how miserable it'd be? Oh, terrible. Be Batman. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, and especially because it's nighttime, but like, that's the most interesting thing about Spider-Man to me is the fact that he has to 
you know, that he's poor and has to run from thing to thing and is constantly behind on stuff. Yeah. Has multiple having multiple jobs already is bad. Oh yeah. You know, but then also having one of those jobs be a Spider Man? No. Uh, it yeah. doesn't matter how yeah. many powers you have. Still there's still too time. Much. Yeah. It's too much responsibility. <laughs> you know? Like with great power should come at least a weekend every once in a while. <laughs> you know? uh, great power, great benefits. It's like, oh, uh, you're you're you're, <laughs> you're 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 gonna take a trip down to the coast? Okay, okay. Thirty three uh, people died of murder yeah, this I weekend. Your body count because Craven the hunt, Craven the Hunter showed up. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> like it's so sad. Oh. Yeah. Oh, um, but um, she's disinterested. Brock says, "Oh yeah, Think Tank uh, you know, blasted me off of the off of the building." Uh, but then she immediately gets possessive, or at least protective, thinking Think yeah. Tank. Well, I <laughs> I didn't read him her as dismissive or disinterested at first. I just right. was kind of like awkward and just like this is my instinct. Yeah, like yeah. I don't do that. But they're good, you know this is going to be a little bit of a relationship mm-hmm. here. Like she likes him, but she doesn't have time. But she's going to make time. That's yeah. a very like sweet feeling. Yeah. Um, you know, she he mentions like, oh, I gotta take care of this think tank guy. And she's like, think tank. And of course, the the civil action league or mm-hmm. whatever would uh you know would have tangled with think tank. Yeah. Uh <laughs> but I love the delivery. Don't tell me that pompous son of a gorgon is messing with my man. <laughs> yep. Uh it's great. <laughs> uh Rusty gets disconnected, uh, you know, at this point. Uh, you know, he's gonna write, you know, he's trying to write down the, their case number and his pen leaked in his pocket. So it's a sabotage pen, you know, mm-hmm. even in the first place. Yeah. Uh, it turns around, he finds Brock, uh, holding Think Tank up out of his tank with Warriana smashing it. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, uh, they teamed up and, uh, Think Tank calls him out. I call this an unsanctioned team up, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, team up. Why don't we take this back to my place? Brock says, hey, no, you know, can we avoid the butt stuff? But she hits him with a lasso. And like he says, he likes it. So good for him. Yeah. Learn, you know, you learning stuff about yourself. Yeah. You know, you got you got the, there's that secret orgasm button in your butt. Yeah. Never gotten it to work, but I uh, <laughs> think he just chooses himself and leaves on foot. Um, the, uh, so the monarch is like this, you know, that was so cool. You know, swing over Ventec Tower. I want to take a shit in his pool. Uh, you know, <laughs> 21 resists that so it eventually relents. This is the kind of thing you would have to practice doing. <laughs> Taking a shit out of a moving flying car into a pool. Oh my God. Like that, yeah. that's hard enough to do it, like in a video game. Shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's hard enough to do in a video game, like where you, where you're piloting a bomber or whatever. And you, and you yeah. have to like, the cross is talking to you. Yeah. Lead, lead, lead the shot. Get you to do it. <laughs> yeah. You have to beat it for some reason. It's mandatory before you can go back and manage your gangs. Uh huh. <laughs> what game are you talking about? Oh, San Andreas. Okay. Yes. There we go. All right. Yeah. We have all those uh, drone, shitty drone missions. Oh, you're Cross right. Yeah. I forgot that was David Cross. Shit. Yeah. Ugh. What a wretched game. Yeah. What, what a game that got in the way of itself. Like, mm-hmm. you know. We did. We, we you have to fly, but we made it the worst flying system that's ever been in a video game. Why not? I wonder if they fixed yeah. that. They didn't. We do. Yeah. I'm curious. I, I mean, I, I don't. Uh, it's just <laughs> the, it's weird how much those games. Uh, we when we covered Vice City, we ran into this too. Mm-hmm. How many annoying things they decide to make mandatory? Yeah, like there, there's games with these wealth of optional things, and then like just the worst, most wretched shit is mandatory. Yeah, that, that's what that's what I like about Saints Row is that they will introduce a mission type and then the rest of it is uh, is is uh, optional to get resources and yeah. unlock stuff like it does not uh, does not force you to do the same thing twice. A lot of the time. It's neat. That's good. Yeah. Um, um, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, uh, they're flying there. Uh, Dr. Mrs. The Monarch sees the blue car follows battle axe is also going there speeding into columbus circle and the guild uh limo is going to run into hank and dean returning from dean's uh night off of studying and they swerve to avoid him battle axe swerves to avoid the limo launches over a statue uh goes in uh careens through think tank and crashes into the whale the hole in the lobby yes so just a little bit of car slapstick at the end uh uh in order to get these two villains off of the map and uh, uh think tank is not dead they intentionally wanted to leave his fate ambiguous uh although yeah, the tank is what got smashed tank t- think tank walked away on yeah. foot yeah uh so so they ended up uh uh he'll, he'll come back at least a little bit later uh not as much as i would like him to but 
uh, Dr. and Mrs. The Monarch looks up at the the crash. The, you know, she sees the blue morpho and then sees Rusty. Rusty is uh, skimming a turd out of his pool. Uh, <laughs> awful. Uh, I mean, and, you can't just skim a turd out of your pool. You gotta, yeah, I mean, <sighs> chlorine's not going to deal with that. You got to drain that thing and uh, um, uh, refill it. Your turd, turd ain't going to work. I, I think I think that the people probably don't do that. I think you're right in an ideal world, but if you've ever been in a public <laughs> pool, somebody's skimmed a turd out of it yeah. without draining it. Ooh la la. Look at you yeah. being too good to swim in turd free in turd water. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I uh I mean it's you'll you'll do a natural water, so you'll do unlimited fish fish turds. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it, but one human turd in the distant past. <laughs> you know? It's not homeopathy, I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. just pull, 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 world. pull water <laughs> pull water with a memory of turd oh yeah God. like like a soup like a like a like a That's horrible a, broth. If, you, if you say yeah if you say broth uh i mean we've made fools of us all yeah. but yeah uh she sees uh, R- uh rusty look over uh, and to her, it looks like the uh, uh, Morphomobile flew to the top of Ven- Ventec Tower, and then uh, Rusty, in the process of taking off his uh, costume, has looked over to survey his handiwork. So uh, yeah. she figures uh, she has identified she has a link. Uh, we get another just trying to escalate the action, horrible post credits, non joke yeah. thing. Uh, Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch comes back. They've finished some of the reno- renovations and is apologizing to the monarch in bed for being an asshole and says, Hey, sweetie, you're not the enemy. I know who the enemy is. Thinking yeah. that's Dr. Venture. Uh, we just had to see her think in real time yeah. to figure this out. Yeah. Uh, a little bit, you know, again, I don't like the, uh, the end credit scenes of these, but it's fun episode for me, primarily for think tank reasons. Mm-hmm. Think tank uh, like that. battle X. I like her, uh, busting Dr. Mrs. The Monarch's balls. Yeah. Yeah. Good episode. A little fillery. A little bit, but good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the next episode also has villain of the week stuff, but I, I like the villain of the week stuff better and it advances the Hank Serena stuff yes. in a really satisfying way. Like I think in terms of filler episodes, the next episode is a, cu- a cut above. Oh, it's a standout. Personally. Yeah. I mean, I kind of yeah. like the rest of the season is real good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They do good stuff. Um, and it's so interesting how much, uh, a lot of it just comes down to performance. Mm-hmm. You know? Like I love red death. I think red death is really fun. Mm-hmm. There aren't that many jokes for red death. It's mostly just Clancy Brown, like being amazing, Uh huh. you know, and same thing with think tank, like think tank has a good emotional core to him. And there's, there's a joke there, mm-hmm. but mostly it's just really fun to hear Jeffrey Wright do this voice. Yeah. So good stuff. Uh, if you like this show. Head on over to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV and uh, give us a couple dollars. Support yeah. your boys. You get cool stuff. Uh, you get access to our Slack. You get bonus content at uh, most of the levels. Uh, it's a great place. And you know, this is our this is our job. We run the network, and that's how we uh, that's how we fund uh, the creation of all these oh, shows. House. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's how it's how I feed my house electricity and gas. Yeah. <laughs> how I keep my house hot. Um <laughs> The uh, early release is going away. Yes. We've talked about that on the show, but no matter how many times we say it, somebody will will probably not have heard it. Mm-hmm. So it's worth repeating. Um, yeah. Early release is going away. So we're replacing it with other uh, benefits that we have. We talked about this a bunch. Yep. Um, just keep in mind, if you want, uh, you know, at $3, you're going to get a big bonus pack of premium stuff. And at $5, you get the extra shows and all that and. Uh, that kind of jazz yeah, and a lot of different shows. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's, it's like a whole other network uh, within the yeah, network. Yeah. 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 Uh, anything else? No. Anything Tell your friends, ratings, reviews, reviews, usual stuff. You've listened to podcasts before. Yeah. You know how to do it. <laughs> uh, until next time. Go, go team venture. venture.